Ah, Foot Clan, Jason is back in good spirits. He slept twice on the terrible Philip Rivers news. He's back with a vengeance, and hopefully his pants remain on during the duration of the show. We've also got mailbag and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. Uh, this is D.D. Westbrook here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Good. I could hear the echoes of football time. That's t- it's tomorrow, I think. It's I think we. Oh gosh! I only do it on Thursdays. Oh man! Leave the people wanting. I can't wait. <laughs> Welcome in the fantasy footballers. Back again Wednesday, November twentieth. Jason Moore, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. Welcoming you into the show. Buy or sell today. The Thursday night preview. Some very important mailbag, some news to get into. It's nearly playoff time. It's, and we're going to leave you in silence on that to just think about the just weight this of the is, playoffs. I would like to take a moment of silence. Yeah, and apparently. Think for those who have not made the playoffs mm. and for those of us that have. Mm. <laughs> very nice, Jason. Shh. Oh. Uh, did you hit the mute button again? Shh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You, shut you, up. Sh- shut your mouth. <laughs> just, just, shut, just, just shut your face. Just let it happen. All right, before we get into buy or sell, I want to remind you, you can find us on Twitter at the FFBallers, Instagram.com slash FantasyFootballers. If you want to follow Jason on Instagram or Twitter, you can do so at JasonFFL. You can follow Mike at FFHitman. You can follow me at Andy Holloway. I posted, uh, posted this morning. Just uh, lay of the land. Wanted to hear some feedback mm-hmm. on the show. We always want to make this show... The, the two most important things for us is that it is the most accurate show that helps you in your league, and it's the most entertaining show uh, out there because you're listening all the time, and we want you to enjoy your life. Yeah, we play fantasy football to have fun, so we do this show and have fun. <laughs> Despite but Also, winning is fun. Despite what you may have thought about fantasy football oh. yesterday. Yeah, well, it's good. it's good to be back, America, because yeah. I have come back to life. I no longer hate. Everyone and everything. I have moved on past <laughs> Philip Rivers. I did a healthy uh, Baxter punt him off the bridge situation on my roster, and I'm I'm super excited for this show. That was a two sleep recovery. Yes, <laughs> it was a two. You, sleep need, you re- needed two reboots. Needed two sleeps, and I'm back. It was so bad that I thought there was a chance you would rebrand one of our two bathrooms here in the studio. That's oh, the, how bad it was. The picture is in the mail. Okay, all right, because we right now it's. It's right. Jeff Fisher, which I can't imagine he loses well, that one spot. Was Gr- the last time it happened, it was Greg Olson. Yeah, he did me wrong, and I did him wrong. <laughs> he really you did. did. Very vindictive <laughs> with my losses in fantasy. All right, let's get into buy or sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right. Week 11 last week, we did AFC West edition. We did all right, I suppose. Keenan Allen, he did top 70 yards. Uh huh. Damian Williams, 100 total yards. Kind of unfair, but also didn't seem like he was on his way. But uh, you guys both. He bought- would have got there. Sure, sure. But I win. And then Derek Carr, top 10 quarterback. He was didn't he get, cl- I he didn't he get there. He was the QB 12. Yeah, he was the QB 12, which. I believe I said he would be top 12, but not top 10. Ooh. Nailed it. Although yeah. I did lose this week. And on the back of the Philip uh, Lindsay call is the way that I see it. I was super happy that I bought Philip Lindsay because of his utilization, what finally happened this week with the Denver Broncos. But you know, so 16 carries, but the matchup was too tough against the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, and Darren Waller, five catches. What do you do now? What do you do with Darren Waller? I Man, mean, I can't imagine not playing him, but he's, he's just... He, he did. He had the five receptions. He had he was back to having a, a solid game. That's fair. He did drop a touchdown. So, I mean, that sucks, but he, he had that opportunity where the play was exactly for him. It was executed perfectly except for the uh, the catch part. Oh, it, it always comes down to the details like that, Mike. Well, with the fins, 
<laughs> fins? Yeah. Are, we back? are they flippers or are they fins? Fins are uh, ocean. Yeah, they're flippers. Yeah, You're right. Fins yeah. are like a like a fish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like a slippery flipper. fish. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. That's why Shady fumbles all the time. Well, yeah. Because he's the slippery fish. I haven't said that nickname in a long time because he hasn't been very slippery. No. He's been a sticky fish. Uh, yeah. Yeah, fish out of water. <laughs> yeah. All right. Buy, sell for week 12. Let's start with Calvin Ridley here. Is he going to finish as a top 12 wide receiver against Tampa Bay? Week Oof. 11 last week was the first top 12 finish for him since week two. He finished as the wide receiver eight last week. Tampa is the juiciest of all matchups for wideouts. I have to buy this prequel to tomorrow's show. Yeah, I love Calvin Ridley this week. I do think the line is too high here. I'm going to sell similar to Derek Carr last week where I do like him, but I just don't think he cracks the top 12. He'll be a great play, though. Do you want to shoot your shot and say top 14 but not top 12? I'm going to say, sure, top 18, oh, okay, but not top all 12. Right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm going to sell as well just because the line is tough. But, Andy, you're right that the matchup is about as juicy as it comes. I'm looking at the stream finder here, though. Shocking to me. You know who the, the second juiciest matchup is for, for fantasy wide receivers? The Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, they, they've been so good against the run. Falling apart. But Xavier Rhodes has been terrible. And there's only been a handful of times he's shadowed this year. And those have been really bad for them. Those are like groundhog shadows. Yeah. Sometimes you see him, sometimes you don't. Yes. All right, I'm with you. Marvin Jones, 10 fantasy points against Washington. Marvin Jones has, since week six, here's his fantasy finishes. 73rd, 1st, 65th, 5th, 29th, and now 8th. You are leaning on Driscoll, which oh, on paper Marvin. is not the worst thing to do. Washington is one of the best teams to stream a quarterback against. To the point where you you look at Driscoll and you wonder if you can recommend him this week. But do he, I want my buy sell in the hands of old Driscoll? I mean, even on his down weeks here, when he was you know the wide receiver twenty nine against Chicago, he was still over this line. Which over means three ten. straight weeks of doing that. Yeah. So what do you got? What do you got? I'm gonna buy. Uh, and for those, if you are not fully paying attention, Marvin Jones currently outscoring Kenny Galladay in a half point PPR scoring format. Uh, surprising, but yet, just I'm just here stating the facts. Yeah, I will. I will go ahead and sell it. I'm going to sell Marvin Jones ten fantasy points. I believe that you can run and pass against Washington. They slow the total play count down. If they can run against them, they will. That's the trick. Who's going to run? Yeah, Bo Scarborough. <laughs> no, I'm going to sell it. I think I, he finishes just below. I will sell it as well. Jarvis Landry, Jarvis Landry, the touchdown, the touchdown streak. Does it continue against Miami? He oh. scored. He scored a touchdown in oh. three straight games. Revenge. There, it is a revenge game. But uh, I'm going to buy this. I keep now. Uh, there's a complete narrative here where it's like, okay, there's the targets are still going to Odell Beckham. Like he's leading. You know, you look at the last few games. He's getting more targets than Jarvis is, but Jarvis is still producing for fantasy. The narrative is that this week with a bad pass rush and a poor secondary, they're going to actually be able to connect on those targets, and it's going to be an Odell Beckham game. I'm going to wait till I see that before I say that Jarvis isn't the better fantasy producer, and so I'm going to say Jarvis gets another touchdown this week. I think Baker's a great play. He was my stream uh, of the week yesterday, and he's his number one wide receiver He's going to get another touchdown. Yeah, I Jarvis Landry is getting a monster target share. So yeah, I, yeah, no, they're both great. Uh, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna Excellent. buy it. I'm gonna sell. All right, all right. Just because of the odds of a touchdown. Come on, yeah, four games in a row. Miami though, that'd be nice. Ah, uh, yeah, I know the matchup is. Good. All right, Curtis Samuel. Will he receive seven point five targets against New Orleans? And do we care? It's freaking Kyle Allen. That dude stinks. Well, DJ Moore's liking it. Yeah. DJ Moore target share is way up there. He's at 30% over the last six weeks, believe it or not. But Curtis Samuel's not in there, so I'll go ahead and sell it. <laughs> Curtis, the, the, like, what's so upsetting is the, the matchup this past week. Now, I know the, the Atlanta Falcons had a, uh, a, a revolutionary meeting, apparently, with, during the bye week because their entire team has, has changed their defense looks 
incredible. They're sacking the quarterback like five times a week the past couple weeks against. They, they were averaging point nine yeah, before and they, that, and they were not before. And but Curtis Samuel in that matchup comes through with four for twenty five against the Falcons. I will. What's the line here? Seven and a half targets. I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna sell it. I will sell as well. While I want to be contrarian, there's only been three games this year where he has been at eight or more targets, despite the average being 7.8, because he's had a couple of monster, you know, 13, 11 targets. Uh, I think he ends up about seven. Hopkins is the target share leader over the last six weeks, 35%. Beckham, 27. Jarvis, 26. So they're both getting a their fair share. Seems like the Landry ones are probably higher probability targets, so he's ending up the better fantasy play. This is a really, really tough one. I said Sell! This- I, just okay. want, I wanted to get my answer out first. Okay. And loudly. Don't yes. Even before that. the question. Even yes. before. Um, I didn't want you to think I was following. It was going to be Mike Wright as a top 10 analyst in fantasy. <laughs> Sell. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Gallup, 75 receiving yards against New England. Oh, we got to move this line. The line's bad. It's too late. It's, I have already sold, it's Jason. Sell. It's, well, it's, it's going to be three sells. Don't just be a copycat. <laughs> it's New England Patriots. Right I mean, now, I, I'm afraid to play any wide receiver against them. Michael Do, Michael Gallup, 45 yards. Uh, I about, would buy about, I would buy 45 yards. Michael Gallup, 50, 55 oh, yards. It's gotta how be, many? It's got to be. Oh! That All right, that's the new line. Button. 55? 55? 55 yards. Because that's a, that's a good line to make you have to stop and think. 55 yards receiving. I will sell it. I will sell it. I will sell it. Oh, well. All right. How low can we go? <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the line? This to is make basically you the tiebreaker. You know how you've got 40, like- 40 yards. I will buy 40 yards. Uh, I think I'll buy. So 45. <laughs> you said you would buy 45? 45. <laughs> would, 45, 45, yeah, 45. I'll buy 45. Anyway, 45, I, 45 if you're at 45, I'm going to go to 40. 40. 40 yards for the man with the glasses. What are you at, Mike? <laughs> uh, I'm 50. Oh, all right. So the line. So set the line at 45. Sell. Uh, sell. Oh, I thought you. No, I'm confused. Okay, so you'll buy at forty. I yes. think the moral of this story, guys, if we want to really drill it down for the people is listening, is that we're expecting Michael Gallup to receive between forty and fifty yards maximum <laughs> in this game, making him a very look. It's hard to sit him. And no, it's not. If Amari Cooper's out, how do you make that decision to sit him? You say, "Hey, whoa, boy, <laughs> whoa, <sit>. boy." <laughs> Gallop on into that stall. Uh, I, no, I. You you're playing. Are you playing Gallop if Cooper's gone? No, I. It depends on options, of course, but preferably not. It just it's in New England. Oh oh no! It's just a very. Th- that being said, you know, Zach Ertz had a very fine game. I mean, being the number one target last week, he had nine catches. He had a uh, nice fantasy day. S- still a very different player Gallup has been fantastic and on a dna uh, level mike I, I, he's totally different i think just this, on a size yes this season he's been great it's it's really just a matter of do you believe that dak and the cowboys can get it done against this great offense if you think they can get it done and you brought up zach Ertz, people do score fantasy points it's not like you can't start michael Gallup, but gilmore i mean you say oh uh, if cooper's out is that actually good is that actually good no, for Gallup? I think it's worse. You know, the New England Patriots are famous for taking away the number one option. That would leave Gallup as that number one option. You know, it's almost like who has a better game here, Michael Gallup or Randall Cobb? I, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm tempted to say Cobb just because he's the third option on the team, and they'll be like, let's make Cobb beat us. All right. Well, it's, look, it's a tough situation deciding – what upside you really have with those players. And that's what it comes down to. I'm not worried about him having a target share. I'm worried about him having production. So, and the 55 receiving yards not doesn't get me excited. All right, that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. You can buy or sell. <laughs> I, I, you can. can you sell? Yes. You can sell, right? You can. Yeah. You they do both. <laughs> but we normally tell you go buy some autographed sports memorabilia. But if you have some laying around, I'm you guessing you could too. sell it. You sure can. All right, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, Tyreek Hill. Big news. Tyreek Hill's hamstring injury deemed minor after an MRI. He's got the bye week. Jason. Considered day-to-day. 
I mean, that's that's great news. It just seems like he could have could have got back out there for. I'll tell you what. One pass. I'll tell you what. I'll give you one point for that news. I will take it because Thursday point. You know, stat correction. Stat correction. You'd hold good. out some hope. Could uh, give me a win. And then David Njoku has been designated to return from IR. He's oh. practicing today. Jason. Eligible to play this week. I am wearing no pants. <laughs> this is great news. Um, are your pants designated to return? My pants are not? Uh, now not designated to return. They are on IR. Um, look, I'm picking up David Njoku. I am. I'm not playing him this week. Okay, I want. I put my pants on oh, IR. Yes, they're gone. <laughs> Uh, not eligible to return this <laughs> I was season. Say not designated to return. <laughs> which really, based on our proximity, we are the ones that will uh, feel the most. Now I have very pro- happy have, for the stable. I have proven. I don't believe the Foot Clan knows this. <laughs> You're gonna share this. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna share this because I said you know look. I sit back behind the table. I could it was be wearing, a bet. It was I, a bet. I could be wearing no pants, and you'd never know. And and Mike, you are like, there's no way I couldn't know. Yeah. We did a Sirius XM live show. And I I got I got those pants down, and after the show, we I was were, like, we were none the wiser. I did a whole hour, no pants, and that's the same as right now. David and Joku off of IR. So again, I am picking him up. I am not starting him this week. I you know I'm I he's been gone too long well, dealing with too much of an injury. He's not in week. football shape. I'm gonna say something. They play Arizona. And they play them in yes. week 15 of the playoffs. Exactly. And even if Njoku has one bright light left. On this season. That's a pretty bright light. That week, Jason will be right. Yeah, look, he's played basically one week this season, this year, and he was the tight end seven. And then he gets injured in week mm. two and has been gone. I like that sample. But Yes, thank you. <laughs> but look, the, here's the schedule. Miami, okay, that's, that's uh, a great right. way to kick it off. Pittsburgh, not so great. Cincinnati, great. Arizona, great. I mean, those are playoff weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm. I'm again. I'm. I'm gonna wait until he shows if I that he play is involved. Him, will you put your pants back on? <laughs> I'll, th- I'll consider it. Will you yeah. consider that? Maybe some shorts. Okay. All right. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. You don't want to miss a single piece of impactful news <laughs> because you may or may not need to keep take your pants off. Say, right. If the new <laughs> Jason Jason's pants. How long did it take you? I'll ask this before we move on. <laughs> How long did it take you to take them off? Was this a quick thing it was and we didn't hear it? It was very slow. I was it, took, one- it was so a five-minute process. So now I have to imagine you're just inching them down? Yes. Oh, so no. It's it like, not a good. Come on. It was, it was just like, you know, I might scoot to the, the people side. People might be eating. <laughs> you know. <laughs> They're on lunch break. Yeah. Oh. He asked the question. I answered. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we, we've got some mailbag. We've got the Thursday night preview coming. Before we move on, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped, fellas, it's time to gear up. Get yourself the gift of shaving. And we're talking about serious shaving this holiday season. I'm talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Look, I've I've ridden the lawnmower, fellas, and it is a glorious ride. It is smooth. It is exactly what they say. The trimming is perfect. It is nick-free because they got the proprietary advanced skin-safe technology. No nicking. No snagging. It's a delicate situation, and you want everything right. Look, there's a lot of there's a lot of curves happening down there, and the lawnmower it handles them all. It's waterproof. You can use it in the shower. They got a whole bunch of other awesome products like anti chafing deodorant and moisturizer. They got boxer briefs keep you feeling fresh all day. Manscaped products are now available at Target stores. Tis the season to Manscaped, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, your friends, the best gift of all, the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Our listeners will receive 20% off plus free shipping when you use the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping when you use the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. Also, Foot Clan. Oh, my goodness. I've been waiting. It's back. It's the holiday season. I've been waiting all year for this to come back. Give the gift that families across America have loved for 100 years, Omaha Steaks. And right now, Omaha Steaks has their amazing limited-time holiday offer. You go to omahasteaks.com. You enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar okay, to order the favorite gift package, a gift everyone will love. It's only $69.99. Here's what you get. Four six ounce bacon wrapped filet mignons, four savory premium pork chops, 
four Omaha steak burgers, and those burgers are legit. You get four potatoes au gratin, four of my favorite caramel apple tartlets. Uh, you get an Omaha steaks seasoning pack, plus a free six-piece cutlery set and cutting board. This what? Wait, what? Yes, you get all this delicious food, plus the free cut- cutlery set for sixty nine ninety nine. I love it. Order now, and you can get the favorite gift holiday package, plus the free six-piece cutlery set <laughs> cutting board included. It's incredible for sixty nine ninety nine. Just go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search code. That's omahasteaks.com, footballers in the search bar. That has become kind of a – I mean, that's a yearly tradition now. We have already – we we have gotten this package. Yes. And we have cooked at your house recently and ate delicious steaks. I think I got it before the cutlery set, though. Yeah. So I, I might have to double down. I, I also double down. am disappointed you didn't sing that to, like, the 12 days of Christmas. Mm, uh, next time. The holiday season. That is not that the 12 is days of Christmas. No, I figure that's the only song he goes to. Yeah. No, when you're doing the countdown, you're like, the Omaha steak and the cutlery set. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do Thursday night preview first, then get into the mailbag. <laughs> Thursday night breakdown. All right. Here's your weekly reminder. Take your Thursday night players out of the flex position. Put them into a running back wide receiver spot so that you have flexibility later in the week because who knows when Robert Woods will decide to skip a game. I was going to say, look, it, it came through this week. If you played your lineup optimally and you put the latest guys into the flex position and Sunday night showed up and you had Robert Woods there, you can at least pivot to – multiple positions a lot and of, not just be stuck. Yeah, a lot of people I that I saw pivoted by necessity to LaShawn McCoy. Right. Because, you know, he he was a guy that wasn't being used, wasn't in lineups, and then he went out, had himself a decent game. All right, let's look at this one. Colts, Texans, both teams 6-4, and four, divisional matchup, Thursday night game. Houston, 3.5-point favorites, 45.5-point over under. You look at Deshaun Watson in this matchup, he's coming off the worst game of the season. Every time he's done that, he's had a very big game following. However, this is a divisional matchup, and the last time he played the Colts, he was around the 20 fantasy point mark. So while I like Watson and while you'd never bench him, I don't expect him to go off against the Indianapolis Colts. They're a pretty strong defense, 13th against fantasy quarterbacks, 6th against running backs. It's going to all fall on Deshaun Watson's shoulders in this game. I don't expect Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson to be able to you know, move the offense down the field against this Colts defense. So where are your expectations with the quarterback play in this game? Yeah, I, I think both are, are good options. Obviously, you're going to start Deshaun Watson. As far as what my expectation is, I do think he has a very big game. You've just seen him when he comes off of a bad game that he works extra hard. I mean, genuinely, like I remember his last really bad game. He stayed at the stadium for hours basically shut the stadium down because he was so upset with himself this is who he is so I think he comes back and has a good game and Brissett has shown himself to be every bit good enough to compete in the NFL and for fantasy purposes look he just gets touchdowns I mean he's not a huge yardage guy but he's been very efficient he can rush touchdowns as well so I you know Brissett is like good. hurry them along like really yeah, rush like, them hurry up Get the touchdown already. He was the QB4 the last time he played Houston. Yeah, yes. 326 and 4. That was at home, though. It would be nice. It must be nice. To have T.Y. Hilton in this game for it Jacoby Brissett. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice. But the nice thing with some questionable situations is that you do get the advantage of Thursday night, right? Will Fuller, game time decision. T.Y. Hilton didn't practice Tuesday. Doesn't need to practice to play. Going to be a game time decision. Would you put him right into your lineup? And maybe I'll find some options for you I to think, compare it to. Yeah, they, I think there was some options. A, I, I lean that I would. What about him versus Devontae Parker, who's been on a oh, run? Oh man! But Hilton is obviously an upper echelon guy who, when he's who healthy. Does Parker play again? Uh, Parker Cleveland. takes on yeah Cleveland. Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. I would I would be playing Parker there. Yeah, I believe I'd go Parker. Um, okay, what about moving into a Robert Woods? Would you play T.Y. I Hilton? Would, I would play T.Y. Hilton, Robert Woods, and his personal issue. Okay, Mohamed Sanu then against Dallas. That's a good one. Mohamed Sanu, or would you just go Hilton? I think I'd go Hilton. I'd, I'd play Hilton. That's yeah. where I lean as yeah. well. 
DK Metcalf. Would you and go Metcalf? Or I would, would you go, go. I would go Hilton. This yeah, okay. is this is a good example of saying okay, when it when a star is coming back off an injury, sometimes you have to play him. When a good quality option is coming off of an injury, you don't, and that would be Will Fuller. I can't imagine. That's not to say he I'm the can't. Same, yeah. He can't go out there catch a deep bomb touchdown, but he hasn't done it much this year. He's coming off of an injury that he pretty much always re-aggravates and re-injures his injuries. Uh, there's no way I would touch Will Fuller in this game. I agree with you on that. Here's a fun fact. The Colts are actually 6-0-1 against the spread versus Houston in their last seven games. This is for the AFC South division. I would take the Colts and the points in this one myself. Well, wow. the, the, well so then why, where's my drop? Well, I thought about it, but people are so used to hearing it on Thursday, Friday. I didn't know if it was like, you know. You can have more than one. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So oh. it's on you. Oh. Burk, burk. Yeah. I don't, I don't have the drop. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I don't have it. Now I get it. But well, I, ha I have this drop. Hey, where's the beef? <laughs> Thank you. For Jacoby Beef Brisket. <laughs> Naeem Hines, Jonathan Williams, Jordan Wilkins. Jordan Wilkins returned to a limited practice on Tuesday. His status today will be huge. Yes. If he like, if he's limited, then we still have no idea who it will be between him and Jonathan Williams. Uh, the fact that he's limited on Tuesday, I would expect him to be at least be active. But if he's a full participant, uh, between him and Jonathan Williams, man, I, I just don't have confidence. Andy, do you, if Wilkins is full practice today, do you still have your Jonathan Williams I do. Faith? And I look, it, it is every time during the year, good or bad, you've, you've got a feeling about a player based on their performance last week. He had a monstrous performance, 8.9 a carry on, a ton of carries. The coaches like him. My confidence is with Jonathan Williams, and I, I, I'm Wilkins, not letting it go even if Wilkins is active. I will say this. Wilkins so has I, been good. In our league of record, um, I am the MAC owner, so this is a devastating loss for me in my playoff push, and I had to, I had to take a deep dive last night. I really wanted to try to get this right, in my opinion. I was swayed by reading and seeing what – the coaches have been saying about what's happened on the the practice squad for a while. The only Jonathan Williams was actually only active for this game because Wilkins was injured. Right. But they were saying he's just been unbelievable in practice all season. You know, while he's been a Colt, he's been great. So I think Jonathan Williams has himself a really good game here. There I'm is on, no, there's no side. security. That's just where I would put my chips if I have to play a Colts running back. I'd put it on Jonathan Williams. But there's no security in this game, and there's going to be a, a distribution of carries across whoever's active. I found the button. Oh! Andy's almost upset of the week. All right, what about Carlos Hyde, Duke Johnson? I will play both of them. Carlos Hyde continues to see the ball a ton. He's averaging nearly 17 opportunities a game. Is He's it because they're at home you like the, the – the it's Vegas just, line? It, no, it's just he's a running back who gets opportunities. Like 17 opportunities a game usually leads to usable fantasy production. I agree on the Hyde side. I don't think I agree on the Duke side. Yeah, I'm, I'm not excited about either of them. I mean, the reality is Indianapolis has been very good against the run. They're uh, the sixth best as far as fantasy points given up against the running back position. Uh, Carlos Hyde has been surprisingly good. You know, he was the running back 18 last week. His previous game, he was the running back 16. That's that's a startable asset, but that's not a must-play guy. And when you're in a tough matchup that I expect to be high, I would take the over on this game, uh, which is rare for me on a Thursday night game. Um, but if that happens, then you would see more Duke, presumably, um, than Hyde. And I'm not really loving either of them. All right, Indianapolis does have the highest pass rate inside the 10-yard line this year. This is what we're talking about with Brissett ending up uh, with good touchdown totals. Ebron last week, dis, you know, disappointing. Didn't practice Tuesday. Doyle, who had three consecutive solid weeks, pure yeah. goose, and not just like ah, I, a few bad targets. We're talking zero target goose for Jack Doyle. And then Darren Fells let people down as well. So the tight ends are kind of, who are you forgiving and willing to play this week, or is it none of them? Uh, look, I mean, I think it's both of them. Ebron and Doyle, I think, are both startable 
assets once you're past those top eight quarterbacks. Even off of the goose, it's shocking that he didn't get a target. But he's still out there. He's you know he was out there on 65 percent of snaps. And you go back the previous weeks, touchdown in each of the week before for Doyle, um, four for 61 the week before that. But compare them to the like the the waiver. I was going to say I think I would take all of those guys: the Goddard, Hollister. Griffin, uh, Ryan Griffin. Yeah, I would you, take all those over Doyle. Yes, Griffin, Hollister, and Goddard. I would play over Doyle or Ebron. Yeah, I, I think it's too much risk for me, man. It's too much. That goose is too much risk. The shared snaps. I want them. It's tough. It's tough. You also didn't have reset. I mean, you didn't have reset for the last game that he goosed either. But uh, what does it make a difference to you if Hilton's active for that for that uh, uh, prescription? Not no. really. Would all you right. play Noah Fant? Who is his target share is absolutely incredible since Sanders is gone, but he's got the matchup against Buffalo. So Jay, would you play Fant over one of the Colts? I would not. I, I would. Think. I would definitely. I, I would. Yeah. But maybe we should bet that one. I'm not gonna bet Dang on it. these guys who whoever gets a touchdown wins the bet, and you, you know trying to predict those is is bad. The only reason I wouldn't bet on Fant eleven targets last week. I get it. And wait for who? Uh, Noah Fant. And he finished as the tight end 19. He was four for 60 with the red zone target in the game. That wasn't that bad. Sure. I'm just saying 11 How targets. How many targets did he... Jack Doyle have last week? Oh, come on. The one-week sample zero. you've got. Zero. It's a zero. You've got me good on the one-week sample. I'll go 11. I'm going always... a career of Jack Doyle being involved in an offense for You'll the You'll probably Colts. just play Phillip Rivers if I know you. And I'm going from a career where there has been. How many, how many top 12 performances in the career of Noah Fant have there been? Well, he's a rookie. One, one. He's well, a rookie. I'm just saying. If you want to talk sample size, I can. I can uh, be dumb too. He, right. I just love hearing you talk positively about Jack Doyle. No offense, could baby hands. jump over Jack Doyle and his baby hands. That is probably he's becoming accurate. more and more yes. involved. All right, Hopkins, highest target share over the last month. He's going to be in your lineup. And if you are desperate, if Fuller's out, you know you could you could go with Stills because of the snap count, but it really hasn't manifested into production. Yes, when they played. You know, uh, Indianapolis in week seven, I believe he was four for 105, but it just hasn't come to fruition yet. He seems very scary to play. Indianapolis beat Houston 30 to 23 the last time they played. It was at home and or it was in Indianapolis. Any other takeaways from this game? Not Anything really. Anything else no. you want to get into? All right, let's do it. Mailbag. Mailbag. Something a little different about that, Mike. It was. Are you in a slightly different range? Uh, my throat hurts horrifically bad. Oh, really? Yes. I oh. did not know this. Well, I'm I playing injured, and I, I didn't tell anybody. Hope, don't tell the NFL. It's better that you didn't because we might have had you not do it, and that would have been worse for our listeners. Oh, you should have heard Jason warming up mm. before the show. He thought he could do it like a like a Frank Sinatra. Like a lamb. No, no, no. Do it. Do it. Okay. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> that was more Elvis. That was, that was that was pretty rotten. Yeah. That was the new place. This is, this is why I knew shoes. I had to step in, even <laughs> with, with the with the beat up voice. But then I'm you, really but glad then you, you still, put him on the line. Then you still subjected the listeners to that. Be well, I think you can do better. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh gosh. All right, if you have a question for the Fantasy Footballers, <laughs> if you're still listening, head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Keep them short, keep them brief, keep them concise to the point, and we'll get to them on the show. Let's start with an Instagram question from Andrew Pot 17 Do you prefer total points for or head-to-head -head record as a tiebreaker for playoff Ooh. seeding. I prefer total points four. I think that uh, that is the best indication of who was the better team on the season. Um, you know, in the NFL, I think they would do that if they only played offense. You know, but they don't. We don't play defense. So I know a lot of arguments are, well, the NFL does it this way. But they can't. They can't do it the way that we can do it in fantasy. So I think points four is the best tiebreaker. I agree. I, I understand like if you miss out on the playoffs to a team that you beat head-to-head, -head, that kind of stinks. 
but you're looking at the season long, what team's better. I, I agree with you. Yep, total points. All right, voicemail question. Hi, Ballers. This is Steve from Maryland, member of the Foot Clan and a spitwad. Oh. Calling today with a would-you-rather question. This week and rest of the season, would you rather start Devontae Parker with Fitzmagic as his quarterback or Allen Robinson with either Jason's favorite, Mitch Trubisky, or possibly Chase Daniel throwing him the ball? Thanks, guys. Congrats, Brooks, on the engagement. Oh, yeah. Oh, Brooksy. So Brooksy Al- is a fiance now. Fiance. 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 My fiance. My All right. Fiance. I'm going Devontae Parker. There's no question. Right. I'm going Devontae Parker if you're talking rest. <laughs> Who are De- you going? Devontae Parker okay. if you're talking rest of season. I think Devontae Parker has a great schedule. Uh, the, he's been far more consistent. He's got the better quarterback play. Yada yada yada. I mean, I'm, higher I'm, baseline I'm, to me. I I agree. I am on record saying that I believe that that I love Devontae Parker. Yes, you are on record. Saying this that. week, I am more inclined to play Allen Robinson. The New York Giants is a great matchup. I think there's been so much made of the Trubisky situation that they're going to try to get him involved. And, and it's not like he's been bad. Like he's had Allen Robinson. Trubis- yeah, okay. No, at Trubisky's has been and is the worst. But Allen Robinson has had plenty of good games this season. It Hasn't is. he had two two real stinkers in a row or something like that? Uh, yeah, Allen Robinson has had – so three of his last four games have been poured. They've they've been games – I mean, four, four ago it was not the worst, but two of the last three have been terrible. That being said, he's also got plenty of games inside the top 24th position. So it's just a matter of, okay – the matchups. Yeah, the matchups great. You didn't you didn't like him against the Los Angeles Rams last week with Jalen Ramsey. You didn't like him against the Los Angeles Chargers a couple of weeks ago uh, with. Um, why do I always want to? I always want to say it's Casey? Harris, but yes, Casey. Um, those were tough matchups for him. The New York Giants. This is a good matchup for Allen Robinson. Cleveland, but if you have to, uh, if you have to just decide one now for like, the rest of the season, yeah, it's Parker. Then I'm going Parker as well. Parker's schedule coming up is Cleveland. Philly, the Jets, the Giants, Cincy. Yeah, that's the championship week. I mean, I think it's just hallelujah. Yeah, passing volume matters a lot. Yeah. Like I think we all think Allen Robinson's a great wide receiver, probably better than Devontae Parker is. But I am fairly confident. At some point, I think it was like week three. There was there was a like a quick question that was. Will you ever start a Miami Dolphin this year in fantasy football? That was a legit question we were asking. Yeah, I but wonder, now, they're, now they've won two of their last three games. I, yes. I wonder going back if we made mention of if Fitzpatrick takes over, maybe <laughs> then we'll start a wide. Because that feels like what would have happened then. Uh, here's a scary question. Hey, Ballers and Brooks. I uh, love the show. This is Randy from Virginia calling. I just had a quick question. So I'm locked into my playoffs right now but i'm curious is it wrong to openly tank for playoff positioning i probably can't get a buy in my team and the my opponent in week 13 is already eliminated from the playoffs so just wanted to get your thoughts on that thanks yeah oh, i get it i get it i've been there you're looking at the bracket the seating yeah. and you're going oh man if i lose this game i'm gonna have a much easier run at the playoffs it's wrong. It is wrong. So here's how it's wrong. You, the question was, is it wrong to openly tank? And it always is. You have to be sly about it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to slide in like, ooh, I don't really believe this is the better matchup. I mean, you can't just put in garbage players. You can't leave your roster unfielded. But you are making the choice as to who to play. They don't know what you're thinking behind the scenes. Go with real high-variance right? players. I think you guys are right. I mean, I'm not. You can't get on the high horse and say that you're going to do everything for the integrity of the entire league in every circumstance. Without, you know, it's disingenuous to your own team's chances. And if you believe that your team gets better by losing a matchup, it's hard to resist that human nature aspect of it. I've seen professional teams do this. Right. It's difficult in fantasy because somebody you have to realize somebody else is going to pay the price for what you do. Somebody else will miss the playoffs. Somebody else will miss their seating based on the fact that you're making a decision about your team. And I, that's where the balancing act yeah. is. And Somebody it's else difficult. might miss the playoffs when I put my best team in there and kick them out. I mean, it's hard because you can't, you, you have to draw a line in the sand. Yes. And if you don't draw the line in the sand, 
it leads to problems for your league. For example, what's to say you don't get a question about, it's in my best interest to drop good players because they will get picked up by another team that will beat an opponent that I need to have beaten. That's in the best interest of your team, but then you're damaging the integrity of the league there too, right? It's a slippery slope. I, if I, I drop players so Mike can pick them up to beat Jason because I want to make the playoffs over Jason, that's the same logic. But, but that infers you know, kind of like a one-sided collusion where two teams are working together to beat one team. That's always going to be wrong. The line in the sand to me is obviously collusion is a, a, a clear line in the sand. Two teams cannot work together to beat a team. you know, And then the other line in the sand – and I think this should be a rule in all leagues is you have to field a legitimate roster. That's right. a, you, you can't leave people off your roster, um, you know, and be like, oh, I'm benching my team. That would be objectively wrong. Yeah, I think as long as you're playing guys, I it's it's hard to say that playing a suboptimal chance to win is the wrong thing to do if, if it's the right thing for your team. Now, having said all that, it's real easy to look at the matchup coming ahead and then you screwed the pooch on your process and now you've put yourself up against a team who blows you out Yeah, and you didn't think you could miss the playoffs but all those other teams yeah. won and then you lost how would you feel this week jason because you are in our league of record you're like tied with two other people you have more points you're, you're in the playoffs how would you feel if one of those other teams did that to the, the opponent that you needed to have defeated here's how the, would you feel here's the thing here's the thing i wouldn't know because I'm not talking about. Oh, like, you would know. You I'm would not have talking that, like you oh, would have that matchup undressed. They played Michael Gallup over Michael Thomas. No, I'm talking. You know, that's that would be where you know it's it's. You look over and they got a bench just full of points. But I that's would, the that's just I'm just illustrating the two sided equation. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Feel bad if you've got Michael Gallup and Calvin Ridley, you can make the argument. You know, look, Gallup's been Certainly. hotter than. Right. Calvin Ridley, and I'm going to choose to put him in. You are winking throughout your lineup process <laughs> this week. All right. Patty Ice, eight on Instagram. How would you handle it if your commish changed the playoff tiebreaker without consulting what? the rest of the league? The main issue being the tiebreaker is now significantly oh in his favor. That's, th this is That's garbage. Oh, get that, out the league. That is. That is. Flush that down the toilet. Look, you. Thank you. You you can't change. Oh, it's a long flush. You cannot change rules in the middle of the middle of the it's season. It's still going. Hold on. There we go. You can't change any rules in the middle of the season without a hundred percent vote. Right from the league. And if if you want to change things for next year, also you need to vote. I, I, for me, is that's more like a, a seventy-five percent. But for a tr a change in rules or any kind of structure. For right now, you need 100% of the people to agree to Well, it. here's the thing. It's ridiculous. Not, here, here's the thing. That's that's true in our leagues. We put everything to our leagues, and I would say the majority of people out there put things to a consensus vote, and certain rule changes need 100%, certain need a majority, yada, yada, yada. There are leagues where the commissioner just decides, and I think that is okay. But even in those leagues, you cannot change a rule for thus this current season in the middle of this current season. People have drafted a certain way. The fact way. it favors him is outlandish is ridiculous i mean please play this for him yeah and if he has no shame please exit yes he either needs to undo the rule or everyone should leave the league right, right. now mid mid season yeah it's, it's, this is a boycott sitch <laughs> a boycott sitch as i always say all right uh andrew dry from facebook says ravens or 49ers defense for the fantasy football playoffs. Ooh. Ravens. This sounds like a great use for our new strength of schedule tool we just put up. Yeah, that's not not bad. Uh, it is the also, Ravens, it's also the Ravens. The yes. Ravens play in Buffalo, in Cleveland, and at home against the Jets. I am less confident than you two about the Ravens defense because of the two road games. Uh, Buffalo and Cleveland could both put up some points. Doesn't mean I think they're a bad playoff D. I I chose to let them go in a league. I picked them up, in and that you did league. pick them up. Uh, who are the 49ers matchups though? They would be playing the Saints, Atlanta, the Falcons, and the Rams. Yeah, I mean between those two, it's clearly Baltimore. Like the Rams, since since the Rams have won, they've gotten healthier, and then the trade for Marcus Peters. Has the Ravens. 
Yeah, is that what, I apologize. The, the Ravens. Since the Ravens have, have acquired Marcus Peters, they are completely different. Like they're Mar outstanding. Marcus Peters is has changed everything for and, for what they can do. And it, Jimmy Smith is back, right? Yeah. yeah. So with him and Marcus, that's Peters, what I mean. This has just been such a good defense. So much so um, that look fourth, fourth, second, fourth the we, last uh, four weeks. Yeah, I mean we we don't always make a super early. Uh, we're not even finished with the current week of games water bet for the following week, but when we do, mistakes are often made. I, w I made a top 15 water <laughs> bet with Jared Goff. I did and the, see that. The more that I looked into the Ravens, you know, the, as I'm the, preparing. The more, the, well, I, I glanced. I tried to make you look I, into it live. I know, but I I'm glanced, just saying. I was reading their finishes. I this want, is terrible. Look, I got to. I gotta be honest with the Foot Clan. Our our job here is to make sure people, you know, put their best foot forward. Jared Goff is my current quarterback twenty. Yeah, it's putting your best fart forward. Yeah, so with Jared Goff. The the Ravens. It, it just makes your, your point. Butt the, first. The Ravens have been a really really good defense. I mean, look at the. I mean, would you say that Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans are a really good offense? I of would, course. Yeah. Of course. How'd they do against Baltimore? Yeah, how did New England do? They finished fourth against New England, too. Yeah, so I would I would definitely say the Baltimore Ravens defense yep. here. And I'm glad you dropped him, Andy. But it won't matter because Phillip Rivers and I won't make the playoffs. We're back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to another voicemail question. What's up, footballers? This is Mark from Washington State. Quick question for you. Redraft lead, half PPR, who would you rather have the rest of the season? Rank them for me, please. Devontae Parker, Tyrell Williams, and Mike Williams. Thank you so much. Love the show. Uh, you said them in the order that I would vote them on. Parker, I Tyrell, yeah. Mike. Wow. Man, what a world for Devontae Parker. It is the world we live in. Yeah. Don't hate I the think, player. I, I uh, asked Brooks, and we'll save it for tomorrow. But tomorrow's quick question is going to be: build the uh, build the roster of players that will be the surprise league winners, and we'll have the opportunity of naming them. And you, Mike, you've been we've been saying this for a while. Parker's on that list. Yes, and he's going to be one of the wideouts of that because of the schedule, because of the emergence of uh, Parker as the target share leader and. You're going to have the variable of Ryan Fitzpatrick either being hurt or turner turnovering his way to the bench. <laughs> but right now, with him on the field, how much does that change if Josh Rosen takes over? One hundred percent. Parker goes from the front of the list to the back of the list, and not even on the list. If Josh Rosen is the quarterback, he done. He's <laughs> off my roster. I will, there's no reason to play him. Would he consider just retiring? Would yeah, that be the yes. ultimate? Parker? Like you said, leave the league with the commissioner if he makes a bad move. Yeah. If the team just puts Josh Rosen and just Parker, I am announcing my retirement. I don't think from he the would, he's football. still a young guy. I think he go. Ah, you can McGroin. <laughs> you could unretire Mike. after a uh, CBD venture. Yeah. I will say this: I do think <laughs> Tyrell Williams is close here. I don't sure. think that's an easy. Like Mike Williams is third, but Tyrell Williams has had a lot of good games. Yeah, upcoming schedule the next two weeks is the Jets and the Chiefs. So, you know, I, I, th I think I'd like both of those players. All right, Instagram question. Do you believe Joe Mixon? This is from Zach Damien 88 Do you believe Joe Mixon can keep up his recent fantasy production? Yes. I think his fantasy production um, – now, that's not to say he's going to get a touchdown in every game, so you'll be a little bit disappointed, but his volume will stay. The talent isn't going away, so let's have a good day. I would say the last four or five <laughs> – thank you for rhyming. Thank you. The last four or five games have really – been a boon to the the psychology of all who own him in keeper in dynasty leagues. Let's put it sure. that way. Because the quarterback situation is not good, the team situation is not good, and yet he's been productive. It sure seems like they're going to have their pick of a quarterback next year. Yeah, and we've, we've got variables on that front now. Yeah, so that's going to be uh, that stinks. Going to be very very interesting. Did you know the megalodon? Oh. Is one week, one week away, seven days from now. Megalodon. Very nice. The Megalodon show one week away, Brooks. Are you ready? No. No, you're not. The you, you can not ready. You, you can't prepare for this. That is the right answer. No one has ever been ready for the Megalodon. 
Not even us. We I, don't know what will come. I have been drinking uh, five thirst busters a day. Wow, oh. that's the prep. Mountain Dew. You got to prep that. The, prepare that bladder. <laughs> Pre- prep it, man. It's prim- Pre- it's prep it. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I've been oh, wait, stretching my hammies. You're stretching to... out your bladder yes. with the thirst busters so that you can endure the long show. Yes. I see. I've never really went to the went to bat for my bladder like that. Mm. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> Five thirds. That's why I'm a professional. Yeah. Clearly, you also have diabetes. <laughs> that is <laughs> not yet, but soon. But maybe so that's, next week. That's that's next, next Wednesday. W- yeah. That's one week from. Th- you got it. Unbelievable. Yeah. Anytime I say exciting. one week, it's the same day it is now. Just, it's always seven days. It's seven days from now. It's crazy. It's going to be amazing. All right. We want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction today. Le'Veon Bell signed jersey. Oh my gosh. Can I guess? $32. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. That's absurd. $32.76. Uh, autographed Jets jersey. Wait, oh. does this mean it's autographed by Adam Gaze? No. Because that would be... Means nobody wants it. Oh, that's rough. Oh, all that right. is... That, is that... Uh, I mean, look. Maybe this is uh, all about how great Pristine Auction is. They are great. You can win auctions. Maybe there's a little indictment on Le'Veon Bell right yeah. now. You're talking about my start of the week tomorrow? Oh, oh spoiler! No. All right. <laughs> Oh, that's the beginning of the show. <laughs> Let's hit this button instead. All right, that is it. Thanks the for Megalodon's tuning in. next week, dude. That's right. That's right. I was going to start it now. Check us out, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, do not forget about Manscaped this holiday season. Get that perfect package 2.0. It's the perfect gift for the holiday season. So perfect. Get yourself, your dad, your brother, your friends, your uncles, whoever, whoever you know. Look, they need the Manscaped perfect package 2.0. Our listeners will receive 20% off plus free shipping when you use the code footballers at manscaped.com. That's footballers at manscaped.com or... Find Manscaped products in Target stores.